to you by L and M filter with the miracle tip. King size, regular. Both at the same low price. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Me. You sure nobody cares, Holly? If they did, you'd fight for me, wouldn't you? Sure. Around here in the alley. Nobody will see us. Sure. Dave. Holly. You're awful pretty. Am I, Dave? All right, stay back, everybody. There's somebody laying over there, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, come on, Justin. That's Dave Thorpe, Justin. Want me to have a look around, Mr. Dillon? Uh, whoever did it ran down the alley into the street. He's just one of the crowd out there by now. Is Dave dead? No, he's breathing. I saw Doc in the saloon there. What's he doing? He's coming. Well, go keep that crowd back, huh? Yes, sir. Dave. All right. Hey, let me throw Dave. Let me throw hey, Dave, can you talk? Uh, let's see. Dave Thorpe, huh? Somebody shot him, Matt. Yeah. Uh. Let me see. Let me see here. Oh, yes, he got shot all right. Who did it, Matt? Well, if you can bring him to, maybe we'll find out. No, no, not this man. He's bleeding to death, Matt. There's nothing I can do to stop it. Can you tell how it happened, Doc? I mean, where the bullet went in? Oh, you don't need a doctor for that, Matt. His gun's still in his holster. Well, maybe somebody outdrew him. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, yeah, let me see here. Now. It couldn't have been much of a fight, Matt. He was shot in the back. The bullet came out right here. Oh. Oh. He's bleeding. Can you get him to talk, Doc? Oh, he's too far gone, man. Well, there's nothing anybody can do for him now that makes a man feel pretty helpless. To stand here and watch somebody bleed to death? Yeah. Probably doesn't even know who shot him. Yeah, maybe not. But he'd know who might want to. Every time there's a new moon, somebody gets murdered around here. We'll get through it. Oh, here comes his brother. What happened, Marshal? How is he? He's unconscious, Joe. He's dying. You've done all you can for him, Doc. There isn't anything I can do, Joe. The bullet went, went through his lung. Marshal, I can't understand it. Who'd shoot him down like this? Well, I was hoping you might have an idea, Joe. My brother ain't got an enemy in the whole country. Never heard a man say a word against him. Thorpe? Huh? Your brother's dead. Well, it ain't right, Marshal. It just ain't right. Not Dave. Hey, Joe, listen to me. Think hard now, would you? Somebody shot him. What? Somebody was his enemy. No, nobody I know. Not unless it was some murdering riffraff just killed him to be killing you got to find out who did it, Marshal. Well, I'd like to, You Joe. better do it. 
Nobody's going to murder my brother and get by with it. It's a mighty poor thing when a decent man like Dave and gets shot down. Nobody does nothing about it. I figured I'd do everything I can, I don't Joe. care if you got to take Dodge City apart, Marshal. You better find that killer. <laughs> Taken the country by storm, L and M filters have soared to the highest popularity a cigarette ever achieved in so little time. And still, L and M sales continue to climb at a record pace. L and M's give you much more flavor, much less nicotine. That's because it's the filter that counts, and no filter compares with L and M's miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. L and M smoke light and mild. Only L and M has the miracle tip for the effective filtration you need. Smoke L&M's today, and you'll agree. This is it, L&M filters. This is it, something new. Now, two sizes. L&M filters, new king size and regular too. This is it, L&M filters. L&M filters with the miracle tip. Join the trend to L&M. King size or regular? Both at the same low price. Sells out back, Mr. Jones. I sure do wish we could fill one of them. Well, it's not likely, Chester. Not tonight, anyway. I sure didn't care much about the way Joe Thorpe was going on about you not doing nothing. What do you expect of a man? Well, he was upset about his brother, Chester. They've always been pretty close. Well, there's no cause for him talking the way he was. Oh, he'll get over it. Master, I guess you're right. Joe will have to run their hide-buying business all by himself now, won't he? He'll manage. He can always hire somebody to help him if he needs. Yes. Well, it's Miss Kitty. <laughs> Come in, Kitty. Come in. Now, this is Holly Fanshawe. Ah, how do you do, Holly? Marshal. And Chester Proudfoot. And I'm pleased to know you, Miss Holly. Thank you, Chester. Holly's kind of new in Dodge, Matt. Yeah, I've seen her around. She was afraid to come here and talk to you alone, so I came with her. <laughs> well, there's nothing to be afraid of, Holly. I... Oh, what's the trouble? You tell him, Kitty. I'll tell him part of it, but I want him to hear the rest from you. Well, all right. After the shooting tonight, Holly came to see me, Matt. She was pretty scared, but I told her you wouldn't let anything happen to her. I uh, know, of course not. Well, it seems she was at the bar drinking with Dave Thorpe a little earlier. And he had a kind of argument with a cowpuncher from that XT outfit that came in the other day. The Texan said Dave jogged his elbow or something silly like that. Oh? Huh? Well, uh, how mad were they? Mad enough. Oh, well, what do you mean, Holly? He killed him, Marshal. What? That cowpuncher, he, he killed Dave Thorpe. Well, how do you know? I was there. You were there? Dave and I went outside in the alley just to get a little air, and suddenly this cowboy shot him. He must have been waiting or something. You recognized him? Real plain, Marshal. It was him, all right. Well, how come he let you go? I don't know. He must have got scared or something. But he shot Dave, and then he ran off. I got scared, and I ran, too. She wasn't going to tell you, Matt, till I talked her into it. She's afraid that cowboy or some of his friends will get after her. No, nobody will bother you, Holly. I promise you that. Uh, do you know this man's name? They was calling him Fly Hoyt there at the bar, Marshal. Fly Hoyt? I knew an old lady down on the brazes called something like that, Mr. Dillon. Only her last name was Fly. Her first name yeah, was... Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, Chester. Holly, are you willing to testify to all this in court? In court? Oh, I'd, I'd be awful scared, Marshal. But you'll do it, huh? Kitty says it's my duty. Good. Now, don't you worry about anything. Chester and I'll ride out to the XT camp in the morning and bring this fly Hoyt in. There won't be any trouble. And, uh, 
Thanks for coming here, Holly. Sure, Marshal. That's XT camp up ahead, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you been out here, Chester? That's where I rode by it a couple days ago. They gave me a cup of coffee at the wagon. Oh. Ah, it looks like they're expecting us. Mm. By golly, it sure does. I don't like the way all them men lined up. Maybe I was wrong last night about there not being any trouble. At the trail boss, that big fellow there. His name's Jim Cavanaugh. You don't know Fly Hoyt, do you? No, sir, I don't. I didn't meet him. Hey, they don't look very friendly, Mr. Dillon. No, they sure don't. Chester. Huh? Let's leave our horses here and walk up, huh? All right. But... Cavanaugh? Your friend there also tell you I'm boss of this outfit? Yeah, yeah. I got 20 men here, Marshal, not counting me. So you better climb into your saddles and ride right on back to Dodge. You know what I came for? That gal Holly got to talking last night late. A couple of my boys was there when she did. And you ain't taking Fly Hoyt, Marshal. Ah. You and your men are ready to kill me if I try, is that it? Kansas law don't mean nothing to us Texans, Marshal. <laughs> Does Fly Hoyt admit killing that man last night? Well, I ain't said nothing about it one way or t'other. We don't find it polite to inquire into a man's personal business. Do you find murder polite? Marshal, you get sassy, we'll bury you right where you're standing. And then we'll drive a couple thousand longhorn cattle over your grave and nobody will ever find you. Which one of your men is Fly Hoyt? Reckon you don't hear. I want to talk to him. Which one is he? Don't pay him no mind, Fly. Why, is he too much of a coward to talk? No man calls me a coward. Hey, Fly. I'm Fly Hoyt, Marshal. You darn fool, Hoyt. I ain't afraid. What was it you want to talk about, Marshal? Well, if it's not inquiring too closely into your personal business, I'd like to know if you admit killing Dave Thorpe last night. I didn't kill him. A girl called Holly Fanshaw says you did. She says she saw you. She's lying. She says you had an argument with Thorpe at the bar earlier. That's true. I remember the girl. Well, where were you when the shooting took place, then? No place that'd do me any good. Now, Fly, that ain't so. Thanks, Jim. But I have to do this my own way. The boys here'd lie for me, Marshal. They'd swear to anything I wanted them to. But the truth is, I was alone when I heard that shot. I'd left the saloon and I was up the street there all alone. You admit that? I got no alibi. But you say you didn't kill Dave Thorpe. I never killed a man in my life. I don't believe in it. Does Holly Fanshaw have any reason to lie about you? First time I ever saw her was last night, Marshal. But I'm sure curious about her now. Oh? I'm rough in my ways sometimes, Marshal. But I ain't no killer. And I ain't no liar. How are you going to prove it? Well, Marshal, I'd ride in to Dodge with you. What for? I'd like to have me a talk with this Holly Fanshaw. Then maybe I can prove it. Now, she was worried you and some of your friends might come after her. 
I'd sooner blind a horse than lay a hand on a woman, Marshal. And that's the truth. Okay, Fly, let's get going. Holly B. this time of day, Marshal. Uh, she's probably still in her room, Fly. I don't know where that is. Oh, she's in the same room in the house as Miss Kitty. She told me so. Oh, good. I'll show you where it is, Fly. I want to talk to Kitty anyway. Hey, Mr. Dillon, look. Here comes Joe Thorpe. Joe Thorpe? Yeah. It's Dave's brother. Oh. Good morning, Marshal. Morning, Joe. Didn't take you very long after all, Marshal. Heard the whole story. Now, Holly Fanshawe's quite a talker. Yeah. Well, it's Fly Hoyt, ain't it? Yeah, I remember seeing you, Hoyt. Do you? I was down the bar a ways from you and Dave. He was a good man, Hoyt. I'm looking forward to your hanging. I'm still wearing a gun, mister. Marshal, how come you didn't disarm him? I haven't arrested him, Joe. What? He says he didn't do it. Who cares what he says? The girl saw him. Yeah, I know. Fly's here now to talk to her about that. What do you mean? He wants to know why she said it was him. Well, of course it was him. She saw him. Girl's got no reason to lie about it. Marshal, she witnessed the killing. She's identified the killer. That's good enough for me. Well, it's not for me. Okay, Marshal. Okay, then. You won't enforce the law here. I'll do it. What do you mean by that? My brother had plenty of friends here in Dodge. I'll get them all together. We'll come after him. We'll take on his whole outfit if we have to. You try that and I'll throw you in jail. I mean, when I say you arrest this man, Marshal, there's going to be trouble. I'm not arresting him and I'm ready for your trouble. Well, you're going to get it, all right. That's a mighty hot-headed man, Marshal. Yeah. And he means it about making trouble, too. Now, Chester, Mm -hmm. wait for us at the office, will you? Yes, Mr. Dillon. It's down the street a ways here, Floyd. Let's go. cigarette ever won such overwhelming success in so short a time as L and M. Never before have smokers spoken so enthusiastically. Janet Blair said, I think L and M's are the greatest thing ever to happen to a filter tip smoker. David Wayne wrote, L and M's have the best filter of them all. Miracle tip is right. There's nothing like it. Socialite sportswoman Mrs. Laddie Sanford said, marvelous filter, exceptional cigarette. Wish I'd tried L and M's sooner. Always remember, it's the filter that counts. And no filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. Our statement of quality goes unchallenged. L&M is America's highest quality and best filter cigarette. Join the trend to L&M. L&M, king size or regular. And both at the same low price. Matt, Kitty. Well, this is a surprise. Come on in, Matt. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I'm sorry to come in on you this way, Kitty, but, uh, well, I kind of wanted to talk to you. Sure, Matt. What about? 
Fly Hoyt just went down the hall to Holly's room. He did? No, it's okay. The landlady told him which one it was. Well, I'm not worried about the landlady. No, Fly's all right, Kitty. He says he didn't do it. and well, I, I can't tell you why, but I believe him. But Holly saw him, Kitty, Ma. tell me about Holly, will you? Do you know her very well? No, not very. She keeps pretty much to herself. Does she have any friends, any particular friends, any uh, men... Nobody she ever mentioned, Matt. Yeah. What was she doing with Dave Thorpe, I wonder? You do? No, you know what I... Matt! Yeah. You stay here, Kitty. No, I'm coming with you. That's your room, Matt. Here. Hey, you stay in the hall. Uh... All right, I'll take that gun, Fly. Is she dead, Matt? Don't look at her, Kitty. What's the matter with you, Fly? Nobody shot you. I got hit, Marshal. As soon as I opened the door, somebody hit me. Knocked me out for a minute. Lion won't help you this time, mister. I ain't lying. I come to and I seen her laying there. And then you come in. Who hit you? Holly? No. No, Marshal. Somebody was hiding behind the door. I heard him move, but I never even seen him. There's no closet in this room. Where's he hiding now, on the wall? Oh, the window's open. Maybe somebody was here. Well, he's gone now. My gun, Marshal. Did he use that? That's been fired. Smart. He killed her with it and then put it back in my holster. Who did? I don't believe a word you're saying. You're Miss Kitty, ain't you? I, I seen you last night. We're not talking about me. I wouldn't shoot a woman, Miss Kitty. I wouldn't shoot a man either, unless I had to. But somebody's sure trying his best to get me hung. Well, I don't know. Kitty, keep everybody out of here, will you? Yeah. I'll send Chester and a couple of men for Holly. Fly, you stay with me. You arresting me? Here's your gun, Fly. Thank you, Marshal. Now, this is my office here, Fly. Let's see if Chester's still around. I'll help him if you want, Marshal. Now I can get somebody else. Well... What are you doing here, Joe? Waiting for you. I uh, won't talk to you, Marshal. Okay. Chester, mm -hmm. Holly Fanshawe's been killed over in our room. Killed? How'd she get killed? She was shot. Go get Doc, will you? And somebody to help you. Yes, sir. Well, wait a minute. What What happened, Marshal? Somebody slugged Fly when he went into her room. Then he used his gun to shoot her. Wh who says he did? Fly. You listen to him like he was your father. What was it you wanted to see me about, Thorpe? Well, I was going to tell you I changed my mind about all I was saying out there in the street a while ago. But now, no, sir. You know, maybe I ought to lock you up right now. You can't lock me up. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with what? Well, I mean, I, mean, I ain't done nothing. You can't lock a man up for talking. Ah, that's not what you meant. Would you arrest Fly, Marshal? He's killed two people now. Chester? Yes, sir. How long has Joe been here? Why, he come in just before you did, Mr. What are you Young? talking about? What difference it made? I had a talk with Kitty, Joe. She told me about you and Holly. What? Holly didn't keep secrets very well. She told Kitty how you made her lie about who killed Dave and how you set it up for her to get him into the alley. Me? Fly didn't Why? get hit fast enough in Holly's room a while ago, Joe. He saw who did it. No. Tell him who it was, Fly. Now go on, tell him. What? Why, it was him, Joe Thorpe. Oh, what are you You saying? might as well admit it. What were you doing, stealing money out of you and your brother's hide business? Would you... you ain't gonna put me in jail. I don't care if I did kill him. No, you... You okay, Chester? Yes, sir. I held his arm so he couldn't get his gun up. It went off right on the floor there. Well, you did fine. 
He might have killed somebody else otherwise. Marshal? What? I don't understand this. I didn't see him in Harley's room. I said I did just because I figured you wanted me to. Well, I did want you to, Fly. Did Harley really tell Kitty about how Joe killed his brother and all? No. Harley didn't talk to anybody about that. That or the fact that she was in thick with Joe. Well, how'd you know then? I didn't. But when he said he didn't have anything to do with it, I got an idea and decided to chance bluffing him. If he hadn't panicked, he probably would have been okay. Hmm. You just made it all up, huh? Yeah. But I made it up right. That's what happened. Mighty poor man who shoot his own brother, ain't it? His own brother and a woman. But he pretty near got by with it, Marshal. Yeah, but when he picked you to blame it on, he picked the wrong man, Fly. <sighs> you know, there are a lot of men I don't suppose I'd have believed. But that was his big mistake. I believed you. Well, I swear. Marshal, wait till I get home and tell him about a Kansas lawman I met. Nobody will ever believe me again. William Conrad. Friends, the fact that L&M filters are sweeping the country is one good reason why I'd like to talk to you filter smokers who haven't tried them yet. L&M's Miracle Tip is the first filter that really does the job. And you'll like the way it draws. Beside that, L&M's give you a really good-tasting smoke. They're just what the doctor ordered. L&M's, king size and regular, both at the same low price. Try L&M's today. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, Jack Crucian, Jill Jarman, and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Hear Gunsmoke every Saturday, this same time, this same station. Hear the great new Perry Como radio show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also on CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>